हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड वेलकम बैक टू दिस चैनल इन दिस चैनल यू गेट द क्वेश्चन फॉर प्रिपरेशन ऑफ डिफरेंट एंट्रेंस एग्जाम्स एंड कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम्स इन दिस वीडियो यू विल गेट द सोल्यूशन ऑफ द क्वेश्चन पेपर ऑफ द एम एस सी माइक्रोबायोलॉजी द सब्जेक्ट इज मेडिकल माइक्रोबायोलॉजी माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर तृप्ति मलिक आहूजा आई एम यू ट्यूटर गाइड एंड मेंटर for preparation of various exams including the competitive exams if you are new to the channel then do subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon so in this question paper there are some quiz type questions and also some subjective questions we are going to discuss the question number 1 in this video and the first part of this question is the true or false a statement is given you have to read the statement carefully and then you have to tell whether the statement is true or false so take out a paper and as i read out the statement you listen to it carefully and you can write whether it is true or false i will also try to give you the correct answer with a possible simple explanation so now let's get started with the first part p aeruginosa that is pseudomonas aeruginosa strains have alginate in its capsule so what is your answer is the statement true or false the statement is true so i am writing true here why it is true because pseudomonas aeruginosa strains they produce alginate as a loose slime material as a capsule this capsule is also called glycocalyx and because of this glycocalyx which is made up of alginate the pseudomonas aeruginosa is capable of forming the biofilms so that statement was true i hope you have got the explanation of this statement also now next the second one is bacterial lps may cause septic shock lps stands for lipopolysaccharide so what is your answer is the statement true or is it false and this statement is also true yes it is true the bacterial lps lipopolysaccharide also called the antotoxin causes the septic shock which is usually fatal so the gram negative bacteria they have lipopolysaccharide in their cell wall and when they cause the infection in the host it may result into the septic shock now coming to the third statement fimbriae do not act as adhesins so what is your answer is the statement true or is it false so you have to listen and did it carefully fimbriae do not act as adhesins okay what is fimbriae the fimbriae they are very fine projections protruding out from the surface of the bacteria and they are adhesins so this statement is not true so this is a false statement the fimbriae they act like adhesins that means because of the means of fimbriae the bacteria they attach to the surface of the host cell and because of which the first step of the infection process is completed and the infection proceeds further if you want to know about the different steps of infection process there is a video i will give you the link here in the i button as well as in the description box you can go through the video and you will get a very good explanation of the different steps of the infection process 
Now coming back to the fourth statement. Convalescent carriers are not capable of transmitting the disease to others. So again I repeat, convalescent carriers are not capable of transmitting the disease to others. Again this statement is not true. So this one is also false. Now I will explain why this statement is false. First of all, what are the carriers? The carriers are those individuals who are themselves not infected at present. They are not suffering from the disease, but they are capable of transmitting the pathogen. So they can shed the pathogen and because of which the healthy person they can acquire the pathogen and they can become infected. Now what are the convalescent carriers? Convalescent carriers are those persons, these are those individuals who were originally infected, they suffered from the disease because of the infection but after some time they get recovered the recovery is also called convalescence so they have got recovered but the pathogen is still there and pathogen is being shed from their body so they are in convalescence they are recovering but during recovery they will shed the pathogen and that pathogen can be transmitted to the healthy host and in the healthy person will become infected. So they are actually capable of transmitting the disease to others. Now the fifth statement. Listen carefully. Zoonosis refers to an infectious disease found only in animals. So the statement I would say that it is again false. So to understand this statement why it is false you should know what is zoonosis. Zoonosis or zoonotic diseases these are those diseases which got spread through the animals. So animals themselves they are either infected or they are reservoirs of the pathogen and the animals they can transmit the pathogen to the host. When animals they come in contact with the host, animals either bite the host or the droppings, the feces of the animals they contain the pathogen, then they, the host eats the animal or the host eats the products which are contaminated because of the animal, the host will become infected. So this statement is also false because zoonosis, these pathogens actually they are present in the animals but they can be transmitted to the human beings also. So these are simple statements but these have to be understood very carefully. Now the sixth one, molecular version of Koch postulates was given by Robert Koch. I hope you remember the Koch postulates. So the Koch postulates actually, these postulates were originally given by Robert Koch and because of these postulates, it was able to tell that which pathogens are associated with the disease. Now the fifth one which is called the molecular version or the molecular Koch postulate was not given by Robert Koch. So this statement is again false. It is not true. So who gave this molecular Koch postulate? Molecular Koch postulate was given by Stanley. Stanley Felkow according to which there is a gene which is found in pathogen but not in the non-pathogen and that gene encodes a product that is responsible for the disease caused by the pathogen. So the sixth statement 
Cephalococcus aureus gives yellow color on mannitol salt agar. Again I repeat, Cephalococcus aureus gives yellow color on mannitol salt agar. Is this statement true or is it false? Yes, this statement is true. This is a true statement. Now, first of all, I will tell what is mannitol salt agar. It is abbreviated as MSA. It contains a high concentration of salt. Only Staphylococcus is capable of growing at that high salt concentration, which is the anisium. Then secondly, it contains mannitol. The Staphylococcus, which are mannitol fermenting, they grow on this agar and then because of mannitol fermentation, they produce the yellow color. Mannitol is fermented, the pH of the medium gets dropped and the color changes to yellow. Not all the Staphylococcus are mannitol fermenting, but only the species aureus is mannitol fermenting. So that's how the statement is true. Now, the eighth one. HIV contains DNA as genetic material. This is a very easy statement, a very simple one. I hope you all have written the correct answer. And the correct answer is that this statement is not true, it is false. So why is it false? Because HIV, the virus which is the human immunodeficiency virus responsible for causing the disease AIDS, the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome is not a DNA virus but it is RNA virus. Actually, it is a retrovirus. Okay. Now, the ninth one, Vidal test is used for diagnosis of tuberculosis. Vidal test is used for diagnosis of tuberculosis. This is a direct statement and the answer is that the statement is again false. Why is it false? Because Vidal test is not used for diagnosis of tuberculosis but it is used for diagnosis of typhoid fever. Typhoid fever is caused due to salmonella typhi. Okay, so this is the false statement. Nine, uh, tenth one, Leishmaniasis is transmitted by the bite of infected female flubitamine sand flies. I repeat, Leishmaniasis is transmitted by the bite of infected female flubitamine sand fly. And this statement is true. Leishmaniasis is also called Kala Azar. The pathogen is Leishmania donovanae, a protozoa. And the vector is the female sand fly. So that were the true false questions. Now the B part of this question is again very simple. Match the following column A with column B correctly. Although this is the match the following but in different competitive exams you also get the match the following questions. There they have got different types of combinations of the one column with the other column the one statement or the object is matched with the other statement or the correct option and they give in the form of the different mcqs but here it it is a direct one so on the a side we see the column a there is a mumps b staphylococcus aureus c meningitis d propionobacterium acne e mycobacterium tuberculosis column b there is upper respiratory tract next sebaceous glands 
next parotid glands and next the catalase positive and next is the meninges so now the matching has to be done the first one is mumps what is mumps mumps is a respiratory disease it is the inflammation of the parotid glands caused because of a virus so it matches with the parotid glands next one b cephalococcus aureus so in this options the option which fits properly is that cephalococcus aureus is catalase positive cephalococcus aureus this is the bacteria gram positive bacteria and it is catalase positive it is positive for the catalase enzyme next meningitis so meningitis it matches properly with the option meninges what is meninges the layers of the brain and meningitis is the inflammation of the meninges it is caused by number of the bacteria and viruses d1 is propionobacterium acnes so it matches with the sebaceous glands propionobacterium acne is the bacteria which is found as the normal microflora of the skin but it is also responsible for the inflammation of sebaceous glands this inflammation is called pimples in common language or it is also called acne next one is mycobacterium tuberculosis now only one option is left what is that option obviously it is upper respiratory tract so you have to match it with this option but actually this option is not correct mycobacterium tuberculosis though it is acquired by the inhalation inhalation of the droplets the droplets which contain the bacteria shed by the infected individuals so it is acquired by the inhalation but actually the infection which happens that infection is in the lower respiratory tract which is the lungs which is called the pulmonary tuberculosis so i would say that it should be written as not the upper but it should be lower so these were the quiz type questions which consisted of some true false statements and the match the following and these can be asked in different combinations in different forms in various competitive exams so do watch other videos which are present in the playlist this will definitely help in preparation of your exams so bye and take care